Well hello and welcome to another Doug the Gardener snapshot video. Snapshot because we're just going to look at either one particular plant or species of plant. In this case we're going to look at a particular Cotoneaster. Now Cotoneasters are members of the Rosaceae family. That's a huge family which includes roses, apples, pears and even strawberries. Originally from northern temperate regions of Europe, Asia and North Africa. Now we're going to be looking at Cotoneasters. As I say, they're all fully hardy and enjoy being planted in full sun, but will tolerate a little shade in well-drained soil. So today we're going to be looking at Cotoneaster hybridus pendulus. Pendulus describes the, well, the form of the branches. They're all pendulous. They hang down the way. So there are basically three forms of this plant. There's a low-growing shrub. There's what we call a feathered tree. And then we have a top work tree and that's the one we have in our garden that's the one we prefer to grow we think it's a slightly more interesting umbrella shape if you grow hybridus pendulus as a shrub it grows to about 60 centimeters and a spread of about two meters however in cultivation they're usually grown as trees this diagram shows you a low growing shrub that's where it's not supported in any way whatsoever the second image shows it as a feathered tree, and a feathered tree is where you've taken a leader and grown it up a stake. And from the leader you will find that branches are pendulous, so they actually form, how can I say, drooping branches from the main stem. The third version is a top work tree, and that's where we have a, how can I say, a stem grown up, say a wild cotoneaster, which provides a good central strong stem, and we're going to graft hybridus pendulus onto the top of it and that will then form a weeping umbrella shaped tree and that's what we have as I say in our garden. No matter how you grow the hybridus pendulus it can be classed as either evergreen or semi evergreen. That means if the winter is not too bad it will remain evergreen, in other words it keeps its foliage and if the weather is not terribly good it will shed most of the leaves if not at times all of the foliage. No matter which of the three versions you buy for your garden they all have the same features and that is shiny dark green foliage and clusters of gorgeous white scented flowers which the bees absolutely adore and these are followed sort of mid to late summer by red berries which eventually ripen at the end of summer. Unfortunately in our garden when the berries ripen they become fully mature then the birds just come along and absolutely decimate the tree. They start off by taking the easy ones at the top of the tree and as the winter becomes slightly harder they work their way down the stems until eventually they get to the ones at the bottom of the branches where they're almost clinging upside down to get to the berries. So there you have it. No matter which version you buy, whether it's the low growing shrub, the feathered tree or the standard tree, it's well worth a place in anyone's garden. So look out for this next time you're in a garden centre or nursery. Thank you very much for watching. This has been a Doug the Gardener snapshot about the Cotoneaster hybridus pendulus. And I'll catch you again next time. Goodbye.